Good evening, everyone. This is Perry Angela of BlueBonnetLove.com, and we are starting something new for the 2015 Texas Blue Bonnet season. We always have so much information coming into us, and we always know about so many different fields that it's very hard for us to get all the information out to you guys. So we're going to give Google Hangouts a try. We've practiced, and we've had some <laughs> we've had some technical difficulties along the way. But we're willing to give it a try, and if you don't catch us live, you can always catch us on the videos. And those are posted on our YouTube channel. So what we're doing tonight is we are going to talk about what's hot, what's blooming, what to watch, and definitely share photographs of where you want to head this blue bonnet season. And tonight we have a special guest. Her name is Kathy Alba of Kathy Alba Photography. Say hi to everybody, Kathy. Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy. <laughs> um, Kathy has been a follower of ours since uh, 2012, I think. And what's interesting is we actually met through Twitter. Uh, Kathy was new to Texas uh, in San Antonio, and she found her first blue bonnet, took a photograph of it. We saw it on Twitter and replied back to her and we became fast blue bonnet friends and she's been riding our shotgun ever since. <laughs> so tonight what we're doing is we're actually practicing, we're actually planning our blue bonnet trip coming up on the weekend of March 28th through 29th and last season we were in the area south and southeast of San Antonio and it was just gorgeous with um, what we call wildflower fiestas. Um, that's Texas blue bonnets mixed in with other Texas wildflowers and we are going to hit that area again this season because from what we're hearing it too is blowing up. Um, it's been a busy day today. We've had lots of sightings reports come in. Today is Friday, March 20th and it sounds like yes it was the first day of spring and it sounds like it's officially the start of the two 2015 Texas Blue Bonnet season. Um, there were fields that were coming in that today that I was surprised by and uh, one as far north as Round Rock, Texas and a field that has a reputation for coming in late and it's already raising its heads and starting to set out some blooms so that tells me things are getting underway. So what we're going to do tonight is I have a map that I prepared ahead of time and I'll show you the different roads that we traveled last season um, roads and areas that we've gotten reports for this season and then Kathy is going to share some of her gorgeous blue bonnet photos that we took last season so every photo that you see tonight is not from this season yet they are from last season or previous seasons and as the season progresses and we begin taking what we call our blue bonnet frolics our blue bonnet road trips we will start reporting to you on a nightly basis when we're out on the road. We'll um, either be in the hotel room <laughs> trying to recover from a day on the road and we'll share the photographs that we saw or we might even try to broadcast live from a blue bonnet field. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Um, also, all the um, resources we show you tonight have also been posted on our website. We'll provide a link to that. Um, in the description of this video and also on our Facebook page and we'll tweet it out and we've created a playlist of um, the fields that we're going to talk about tonight uh, from last year's season and stuff so you have an idea of what is possible to be seen down in this area and like I said before it is stunning. I've never seen Texas wildflowers like this. I mean Kathy what do you think of last season? Last season was fabulous. In front of what I'm seeing right now, reports that are coming out, it looks like Southeast San Antonio is really popping. And with all the rain that we've had this year, I think it's going to be an unbelievable season. It, it, great. Yeah, and, and you know, last season was really nice in a very small area. It, it was kind of like a band that went east of San Antonio over to Gonzales, and that was it. And, and I had never been in that area before. That was the first, because um, I was hitting the hill country, which we know last year was not that great. Oh, it had no. no rain. So that mm -hmm. was my first time actually traveling through southeast San Antonio, and 
I've never seen all the color. I've just seen the blue bonnet. So it's actually pretty fabulous and a sight to see. Yes. In fact, I have to admit, I took my mother. My mother rode my shotgun um, the weekend after you and I were last there. So it was so nice last year with just that small area that Kathy and I actually went back twice. Yeah, <laughs> so because that's you took mother, and then I turned around and took some friends back. Yeah. Yes, that's true. So we both made several trips down there. And uh, my mom is 75, 76 years old. She's seen a lot of blue bonnets in her time. And she has seen Mock Road in Ennis. <laughs> and she, wa she told me, she said, that was the best Blue Bonnet road trip she had ever taken. Well, but that's also because she was riding with me, and I knew where all the good fields were. Yeah. And we went straight to them. So, but that oh, it was a great, it was great down in that area. And like I said, it was just a very small band that went from east of San Antonio to Gonzales, maybe like 87 or Highway 77, and it was nowhere else outside of that. So this year they've gotten so much rain in the other parts that it's a big piece of Texas that's blowing up nicely. So anyhow, let's get started on the map because I know everyone's fingers are twitching like, get to it girl. Alright, so let me get this going. I'm going to share my screen. Alright. Okay, so Kathy, you can see the map, right? Yeah, I can see the map. Alright, let me bring mine up. All right, so let me explain a little bit on this map so people understand how to use it. On the left-hand side here, follow my cursor. Um, these are different layers that you can turn on and off. So notice that the very first one, it's going to turn off that green circle. So when there's too much on the map that distracts you and you don't want to accidentally click on it, just feel free to uncheck that box. You're not going to harm the map. I've created the map so you can't do anything to mess it up. And you can just turn things on and off as you please. And that helps make, that makes navigating around on the map a little bit easier. So anyhow, let's um, do kind of a brief uh, summary of what I've been hearing about for the different areas of Texas. As I've said, um, this area south and southeast of San Antonio is really beginning to bloom right now. I don't feel it's at peak. Um, there are parts of Corpus Christi that are probably peaking by now because they have been blooming for several weeks. And we'll zoom into the map as I talk a little bit more about those. Also, one area of Texas that I'm very shocked to be hearing reports about is actually the valley. So we've gotten um, a couple of several reports here. Uh, one was in Laredo, another one was in the McAllen area, and they've actually had blue bonnets blooming since um, January. In fact, one Facebook follower told me her friend's front yard was full of blue bonnets, and they had already gone to seed in December. Kathy, that is crazy. That's crazy. So we did get a report of Highway 281 being full of wildflower fiestas. So that's blue bonnets and then other Texas wildflowers. So if you're in that area, that might be a nice drive to do or part of it as well. Um, we'll talk about Corpus Christi in a few minutes. Also, another area we're getting lots of reports on is the western part of San Antonio. Um, Highway 151. Uh, loop 1604, wait, 1604 or 1640? 1604. Okay, got it. Alright. I used to live in San Antonio, but it's been a long time since I've been there. Um, also, today we got a, a report on New Braunfels and um, that there's lots of blue bonnets blooming around Loop 337. Um, That's we, a bit when 337 may. Yeah, she and she said that they were all along the loop. So New Braunfels is starting to bloom. That's a good sign. Um, now, for those of us who who watch us through the website, we don't have any official reports coming in yet that are actually on our Facebook page. I mean, our website pages. All the reports that I'm talking about now are coming through our Facebook. Page Texas Blue Bonnet sightings. So if you are not following us on Facebook, we highly recommend that that's where you follow us at because that's where the majority of our reports come in. 
it's just the nature of the beast. People are much, it's much easier for people to use social media than it is to give reports through our website. I understand that. And so if you don't follow us on one of the social media channels, you really should. That's where you're definitely going to get all the updates. Um, also, other areas that are we've had reports on for the last several weeks, um, Interstate 10 corridor is beginning to bloom with blue bonnets along the median. No particular place has been mentioned as being, you know, at peak or anything. Um, typical spots is the interchange of 183 and I-10 at the Luling exit, also Highway 71 um, near Columbus, and um, all along, oh, Schulenburg's another place people have been reporting in Plutonia as well. Um, we did get a report of the Telfair subdivision in Sugarland, so that is on our Facebook page. Also, last night we got a report, and they were really nice looking blue bonnets, um, at White Oak Bayou, which is off of TC Jester and 610. Definitely go to our Facebook page for that report. It looked really nice. The reporter told us they were thick as thieves, and there were Indian paintbrushes as well. Um, Brenham is not waking up yet. Uh, they had a lot of rain, a lot of cooler weather. They just haven't had enough sunshine for the blue bonnets to get started in that area. Um, we've heard some chatter of blue bonnets being in the woodlands. Um, I think mostly just along the roadsides and stuff. And then also, um, uh, there's some blue bonnets popping up south of Marble Falls on 281, south of town. And also Highway 79, Old Settlers Park, um, next to Dell Diamond is the one report we got that they were starting to uh, lift their bloom heads. And if we've got blue bonnets going on in Round Rock at that park, that far north, so things are really starting to, to get going. So in the next week or two with the warm temperatures and the sunshine, uh, the season's going to explode. And Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center came out with their prediction um, on Tuesday. Yep, it's a good season. <laughs> it's going to be a good season. So we're really looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom into the area we're going to talk about tonight. And I've already mentioned the report of Highway 281 between McAllen and Corpus Christi. In Corpus Christi, where the blue bonnet should be at peak right now, um, there's different areas in the city that we're sure there's fields at. Um, there's a church on Yorktown Road that we've heard a little bit of chatter about, but we haven't seen any pictures. But the main area in Corpus is the interchange of Interstate 37 and Highway 77. So uh, those should be at peak now. Also uh, saw some... Um, saw a picture uh, of a nice uh, field that was about halfway between Corpus Christi and San Antonio that was looking very nice so watch out for that one on your way um, it seems as if on Interstate 37 there's the spot about midway and then there's the blue bonnets at the interchange with Highway 77 that look real nice along that road also um, Highway 181 is usually a, a sure thing each season. That's usually the first um, road we start hearing chatter on um, as the blue bonnet seasons get started. We've heard that the things are starting to get color between Beeville and Kern City, Kennedy, and then on into San Antonio and Floresville as well. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit to this area. Now, just because we do not mention you know, a particular place in this area does not mean it is not blooming. It's just we haven't heard anything about it. Um, we did hear a report, but we didn't see any photos for Poteet and Pleasanton that they're doing really well as, really well, as well. And Kathy, did you have another report in this area too that you were hearing about? I believe they're with the reports coming out of Divine. Yeah, I think. Flowers in that area. Exactly, Divine. Um, and we had reports of blue bonnets on into Pearsall as well on Interstate 45. So if you happen to be traveling that to Laredo, you should be in for a pleasant surprise. And then one of our favorite places is Floresville. That's another great place for flowers as well. 
Um, we're going to talk about this road at the end of our presentation, but tonight the main focus is on Highway 123 between Seguin and Stockdale. Now, we have not driven this road yet this season. What we're talking about is what it was like last season to give you guys an idea of what's down there and also to tell you of specific fields along the road. So, we're going to start off, we're going to start off south of Stockton with your photographs, right, Kathy? I think so. Okay, and then we're going to, we're going to move north, correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. Up, up highway. Okay. So I'm going to I'll tell people. When we, yeah. When we're looking at the photos, I'll have to see which, where it started south. But. Okay. All right. So um, what we'll do is work our way south of Stockdale and then move along Highway 123 and talk to you about these different FMs that come off and um, share some pictures of the photos uh, of the fields that we saw last year. So. Um, and even though these are last season's pictures, we have definitely started to see postings coming from the same area. Oh yeah, the so one that you saw on that one album, was that 181 or what road was that? Um, from that photographer. I thought I it was 181, wasn't it? I thought it was Floresville to Stockdale. Oh, really? Okay. I'd have to go back well, and look, but I, no matter what, we're talking about this area right here. Yeah. I think if you hit the Floresville Stockdale area, you're you're going to start seeing color already. Yeah, and then the one person who mentioned 181, you know, between Beeville and Floresville as well. So yeah, Kathy follows another photographer. We couldn't show you those photos unfortunately because it is that person's private album, but they were gorgeous. Drum and flocks. Roman flocks, everything. It was great. Um, so let me go ahead and show you where the main FMs that we're going to talk about and show pictures of tonight are. So as I said, this is Highway 123. It runs between Stockdale and Seguin. And then this was a gorgeous road last year. It's FM 3335. And there were several fields on this road. And we have video of those as well. We created a playlist on our YouTube channel of all the videos we have of the area that we're talking about tonight. And then, of course, there's FM 1681. And this is where there is definitely an OMG field that Kathy will be sharing her photographs of. And then um, we have a cemetery up in this area we'll show photographs. And also, Kathy included some photographs that were over by Cuero and Yoakum. Uh, last season, we traveled um, down 87 into Cuero. No, we must have come down through Gonzales because we came down 183. Yeah, I think we and, came through Gonzales. Yeah, and she's got a photograph of some hay bales in that area and then another photograph here. And then she'll also be showing us um, some photographs of Plutonia. Uh, there's a great cemetery in that area for um, blue bonnets and headstones and then we'll have some photographs around the Luling area here and then she's going to finish up with some more photographs that were more south of Stockdale when she went down um, another time with another follower of, our, follower of ours as well. So I'll uh, be showing Kathy's um, photographs and she's going to talk about her photographs and we'll tell you where they were and everything. So are you ready for the photos, Kathy? I'm ready. Okay. All and right. This is something new we're trying tonight. So yeah. Harry's got the album open. We're hoping I let's see. I'm in control. In control. Because <laughs> <laughs> last night we had a little bit of a lag time with trying to open open up separate albums. Okay. So can you see the pictures tonight? I can see the picture. You would need to scroll down for me to see exactly where this is. Okay, well I, I can mention where it is. That, okay. So this is um, the private land that we got onto south of Stockdale. Yeah, so this is from the main road though. So anybody who drives by this road will actually be able to see this. We were act we, You and I both got onto the land um, which was behind these trees on the private property. But I have to say 
the most beautiful part of this property was seen from the main room. Yes, I agree. Um, you and you kept the photos of the back part, right? Yes. On the land, yeah. What was great about this um, field is that the scraggly life excuse me, live oak trees are up front. So, you know, all you have to do is move a couple of feet one direction and you get a completely different angle as you're shooting your photographs. And it's just gorgeous. So um, you'll notice the blue of the blue bonnets and we're going to talk about the difference between these blue bonnets and Central Texas blue bonnets when we get to a closer photograph. And there's some drum and flocks in there, a little bit of white prickly poppy, and then the yellow flowers are groundsel. So um, we'll talk about those too. All right, and this was, I mean, it was a great piece of property, so we had a good time on it. All right, so I've moved to another photograph that's a larger panoramic. Yeah, this just showed how wide the flowers actually went up the landscape, up the hill. So this is a panel. I combined two shots together, but this yeah. property was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. And this is facing west, so as you travel south on Highway 123, this field will be right on, it'll be on the right-hand side, and also it's right south of town, so you won't be able to miss it. Now, one thing I do want to mention about the, this landowner, he does run cattle on this land, and if you don't know this, cattle and horses do not eat blue bonnets even though you'll see photographs or you'll see them in the blue bonnets and it looks like they are, they don't eat them. So when blue bonnets bloom on land that uh, owners are running cattle on, they have a hard time feeding their livestock. And so this landowner, believe it or not, and you don't need to leave any comments about it because everyone has the right to do what they want with their land, he sprays the fields with fertilizer. And so he'll leave the blue bonnets out for a couple of weeks and then he sprays the fields and it kills all the flowers. So when we tell you you need to get out to this field, it's blooming, you know, we'll try to stop by the house and talk with him again and find out when he's going to spray. But once he sprays, guys, it's gone. And it was gone in a few days, wasn't it, Kathy? I think he told us the day we were shooting out there that he was getting ready to spray it within the week. Oh yeah, and we went out there again, and it was just gone. Yeah. Or they spray, you know, it's 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 gone. They just yeah, dry up. it is gone. So if we tell you he's going to spray, and you want to see this field, you have to get down there as soon as possible because they're gone within a couple of days. So that's a beautiful shot. I just love that one. Do you see this one? So this is the same property, and pretty much it's um on the other side of the driveway of what we just looked at. So yeah. if you just go further up, the, literally it's on the other side of the driveway. So we just went further south down Highway 123 and you get a completely different look and I just love the branches on that tree. It is so great looking. Alright, so. I think the next shot, that's his that's the private property. Yeah, so we actually, like Kathy said, we um, <laughs> We were lucky. The landowner was driving trespass. down the driveway. We asked permission. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We did not trespass. <laughs> so do not trespass. But we were lucky enough that the landowner was driving out of his driveway. <laughs> and I stopped him and, uh, you know, explained to him. And his wife just loves the blue bonnet. So we took photos and we shared them with her. So. <laughs> They're a very nice couple. They're very nice. And they have a lot of rattlesnakes on their land as well. But we did not see one. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten lucky. Yeah, so now one thing I want to talk about is the difference between these blue bonnets and regular Central Texas blue bonnets. You'll notice how blue the field is. Did you process this photo, Kathy? This one is, yes. So this one is edited. So you bumped the color just a little bit, right? Uh, just a little bit, yeah. Just, I, yes. And you know why? Because we were shooting in full right. sunlight. We right. to wash it out a little bit. But when you're looking at it, that's what it looks like. Yeah, and I, so I just want people to understand yeah. just how bright these flowers are that, you know, she hasn't pumped up the saturation on these colors. And, um, but the one thing is, this is a different species of blue bonnet um, than what typically grows in central Texas. This is known as the sandy blue bonnet, or its scientific name is Lupina subcarnosus. And you see no white tips in the field. That's what's different between what we commonly refer to as the Texas blue bonnet 
Lupinus texensis. And so you can tell the difference driving by at 60, 70 miles an hour between the two different species. If you see the most blue you've ever seen and you see no white, you are looking at the sandy blue bonnet. But if you see white in the field, you see the white top tips, then you're looking at the Texensis species. And um, sandy blue bonnets only grow in a very small area of Texas, and typically it's um, two bands of sandy soil that runs along the I 10 corridor. So you won't find these blue bonnets in North Texas up by Ennis or Dallas. You won't even find them much further north than um, I 10. Like you won't you find them in San Antonio. No, and you won't yeah. find this species of blue bonnet in Brenham. Um, like I said, they are mostly south of I-10, and that's where we are in this area. So just just a little teachable moment there on letting you guys know. And this is another shot of his land as well. He had really tall blue bonnets. They were close to our knees. And that's a normal size blue bonnet. Uh, unfortunately, with the drought, we've been seeing really, really tiny plants. And people who, who saw blue bonnets for the first time while we were having the drought, they must have gotten the impression that blue bonnets were that size normally, and they're not. They're typically as high as your knee. So we should be seeing great plants this year. You know, I really should have posted. Uh, I had a picture of us driving in this field, and you could see the flowers were covering up the tires. They were oh, yeah. Tires. yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to be careful driving through here. Yeah, it was great. Great, great, great. And, we, and like Kathy said, we were shooting at high noon, which is not something you want to do. Um, because it washes out the light and the color in your photographs. Um, but she got some great photos nonetheless. If you're a photographer, if you want to get out there and shoot landscape, you're better off scouting out your areas during the day and then get there either early morning or closer to sunset. Right, so you get the nice, the nice softer light. Yeah. So this is still on his, their land, right? Yes. Yeah. And I can't remember if the pink flowers are evening primroses on this land or if they're the drum and flocks because I, for some reason, I feel like where the donkey was, there were evening primroses. So. I think it was primroses. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, let me go to the next photo. Oh, here's the donkey. He was so cute. His name is Ronnie. Um, where he is on their property, unless you have a good zoom lens, you won't see him up by the road unless they let him out and he grazes up front. But when we were there, he wasn't grazing up front. And look how intense those blue bonnets are. And you barely see any white. Now, those blue bonnets still have the white banner petals. I mean, the banner spots on them. It's just the white tips that they don't have. He's so cute. And then, of course, there's me taking photographs with my iPad. Now, Kathy, being the avid uh, landscape photographer, she's the one with the fancy photography equipment. <laughs> my fancy equipment's on the fritz, but she has it. And I just shoot my stuff with I iPhones and iPads, and I shoot my video that way as well. <laughs> We're well-rounded. Yes, we have, we have enough technology with us to float a boat. <laughs> <laughs> So now, where was this one at? Okay, this was at the cemetery. Oh, okay. All right. So there is a cemetery just south of Seguin. It is either pronounced Duger or Duggar Cemetery. It's D-U-G-G-E-R. You will see it on the left-hand side as you're going south on Highway 123. You will not miss it. And it is a plethora of wildflower fiestas. So with this close-up, we can do a little lesson on the wildflowers. I'll get my cursor and kind of point things out. For those of you who are unaware, this is an Indian paintbrush, a single one, it looks like, or one of two, in amongst all these other blue bonnets. We'll wait till we have a better uh, shot of Indian paintbrushes. But then these hot fuchsia pink flowers are known as drum and flocks. And they come in a variety of colors, mostly pinks, but they are just gorgeous. And did you edit this photo, Kathy? No. No. This is These un are, no, I have not. Yeah. These are unedited colors, so your eye will see even more intense colors than these. So 
This is great. And then let me get some more shots of uh, the cemetery. And notice how there's still the white banner petals on this species of blue bonnet, but they do not have the white tops. And there, uh, this cemetery is a modern. It's still current in, uh, currently used. So if there is a, a service going on at that time, please don't enter the cemetery and be respectful. It is, um, you know, the community's family members are buried in the cemetery, so it is still active. It's still used. You must be respectful, especially if there's a ceremony going on. But uh, there's just tons of flowers and. This one headstone was had a really nice. Oh, you didn't keep the picture of that on there. Actually, you can. You should be able to zoom in. Oh, you just yeah. zoomed into it. Oh, there, there you go. go. And then you can just. Got it. Go yeah, this here. was a really nice saying that was on the headstone. Um, you listened to your dad's advice, went out and made the best of your life. You love life and never let it slow you down. I'm so proud of the man that I found. Now your eyes are closed to rest. God broke our hearts to prove he only takes the best. Oh, that's just such a nice saying. And, and this, oh, okay. So this is a nice little field of Indian paintbrushes that we found further down the road in front of a really rustic barn. So I'll show you a photograph of that in just a second. But do you remember what road this was on, Kathy? Um, do I have it written down below? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, right. Oh, it was on Fox Trotter Road. Okay. So what you do is you just keep going down the road that you'll be on where the little cemetery is, and you'll run across this one barn here. I'll show and you. that land, it was actually hard to, I would have had to have combined three pictures together to get everything in. Oh, that yeah. It was, was really massive. nice. Is is this um edited? That no, that's not edited. It's not. Wow, no. those colors look great. So yeah, it's you know it's that typical rusted tin roof kind of barn kind of shed. So you can get some great shots of this area. And this is like like I said, this is on Fox Trotter Road, and the you will see this barn from the highway. And it's just south of the cemetery that we were just talking about. And then this is a tree of a really interesting bird. Can you tell us more about it, Kathy? That is the Terra Terra. And I did at the time I was shooting this, I did not realize the Terra Terra was in the tree. And when I did and tried to grab a zoom lens, he flew off. But this bird I've been trying to spot in San Antonio and have not been able to find it. And when we went on this trip, I'm telling you, this bird must have flown down in front of us every day. Oh, my we God. Went down this road, and here would come the Caracara. And I had never heard of a Caracara. I thought it was some mythical bird. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I saw this bird that, like, I'm used to seeing bald eagles. And all of a sudden, I see this bird with a white head. But it has a stripe on its wings. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not a bald eagle. And then Kathy's like, oh, that's a caracara. And I'm like, does that bird really exist? <laughs> they're quite beautiful. When, when yeah. And they're big. This, this uh, photograph doesn't even give you a sense of how big they are. Now, if you want to catch this bird in a photograph, this is his territory. We spent probably a half hour, 45 minutes here, and he was flying up and down the road. So this is Fox Trotter Road off of Highway 123. It's um, east of Highway 123, and it's definitely his territory because he was staying on this tree and another tree further up the road. Yeah. And I think at different times during the day, we would see him cross the main road. Yeah. Now, this field was a gorgeous field of sandy blue bonnets, and it was on FM 3335. We must have found um, four or five gorgeous fields on this road, plus the road was lined with wildfire fiestas. This FM is just north of Stockdale on Highway 123, and it uh, is off to the east side of the road. So. Kathy got this is with a zoom lens, so that shows you how big the field was. She had to use her zoom lens on zoom lens on this one. And there's a that's a shot further back from the road, right? Yes. 
Yeah. So you can see more of the color closer to the road in a sense. Yeah, this um this field, it had a great cactus in front of it too, a perfectly pear cactus. So, you know, by getting low to the ground, you got a great shot of all the different flowers. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Indian paintbrush, those are Indian paintbrush, not red blue bonnets, as I've seen some people think they were. And these look like they're just yellow, they're yellow daisies right there too. And then the sandy blue bonnets in the background. And then some more shots of them as well. This was, and here's the prickly cactus that's in the front. It looked, it made a nice setting, didn't it? It was very pretty. And you then, of course, how intense the blue is. Oh, so these are unedited? Those, I believe those are edited. Okay, all right. But still, you didn't even bump the but color. Not plain. much, not much, no. Pretty oh. much just compensating for all the, the sunlight that was hitting. Okay, and this is one of Kathy's favorite places on FM 3335. This, uh, it's a house, and we're standing at the road, and they have five live oak trees um, with the blue bonnet surrounding them. So it's just a gorgeous scene. It was actually to to, cap, to see that it was quite magical. The yeah, way, the way the trees and the the flowers were kind of growing in the shade. It was beautiful. yeah, and the um the canopy of the live oaks they. They're close enough to get that sort of magical feeling from them and stuff. So a great place to stop and get some really nice photos. So that was FM 3335. This field was further east of the field we just showed you with the cows in it. Okay, this photo is uh, it's kind of northeast of the Interstate 10 and Luling intersection where Highway 183 is. And it's kind of, it's northeast of where the Bucky's is on the north side of I-10. And I didn't look up the name of the road, but I think it ha it's Turkey Hill. I think the word turkey and hill are in the word, name of the road. <laughs> it was a small road. I think you remember it was a really narrow small road. Yeah, it was either a, a narrow one or it was a dirt road too, wasn't it? I think the further down we went, it was, it was yeah. a dirt road. But it was, I don't think there was room for two cars to yeah, no. And then, of course, you know, we had dogs put us back in the car, too, on that one. <laughs> we get chased a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, a lot of interesting things can happen when you're on, a, when you're on the road as much as we are. Um, I actually had someone shooting down the road that I was driving. They weren't shooting at me, but they did not know I was on the road, and they were shooting, so I had to honk, honk, my, honk my horn to let them know, but... Uh, and then we have another interesting story of another field coming up, <laughs> too. So these are some really great looking hay bales. They were on uh, Highway 87 north of the Y, um, north of Quero, right? That was, a, yeah. that was north of Quero, not Gonzales, but Quero. Okay. I think it's Quero. If you scroll down, this one I think is the iPhone pick, right? Um, it should oh, yeah, did you have the GPS? Yeah, it was your iPhone. Yeah. yeah. No, it's sure. it, it's north of the Y. Um, and the picture eight. might actually show where it's at. So. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there's another nice one. Now, the thing about this field, there were, you could see the homes in the background and stuff. Yeah, just south of Holcom and north of Coero. So these were tiny, short blue bonnets because. This was further east, and they hadn't gotten as much rain as the Stockdale Seguin area. And we think you can tell they're not the sandy. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. So these are um, what's known as Central Texas Blue Bonnets. Their scientific name is Lupinus texensis. So this is what this is the species of blue bonnet that most Texans consider the Texas blue bonnet. So notice the white. You see the white at the top tips. That's how you know it's a, the different species. This one is more um, prolific. Um, in Texas. It has a wider range than the sandy blue bonnet. Now there's no guarantee that this field will have these hay bales in it this season. So all you can do is drive by and see. And there was no fence and so we did step into the field. So. And there were a lot of people stopping. Yeah. Well that was because they saw us stop. <laughs> so be respectful of private 
property landowners' rights, but we did not cross the fence. This so. was on a main road. There was actually yeah. construction going on, cones set up. You could That's pull true. Them. They were in the background, yeah. So that was a nice, um, Kathy added the sky in this one, so yeah. we didn't stay around for sunset. We did shoot it at high noon, so we had to do, she had to do some post-processing. Yeah. When we're on the road, we're kind of like, Shoot the blue bonnets and on we go to the next spot. So. There you go. Exact. Well, she thinks we're going fast. We actually take our time because she's always shooting a million pictures. And to me, I'm over there tapping on my on my wrist, going, uh, "Kathy, we got to hit the road." But you know, <laughs> otherwise, we might be there all day in one field. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then here's another um, here's another field that was on Highway 77 towards Yokum, right? So North Aquero, going to Yokum. And uh, once again, we have the sandy blue bonnets. Notice how there's no white tips in the field. And then drum and flocks. These are an intense red drum and flocks instead of the fuchsia. So they were great. That was, this is a great field. This field is a little, it's like in a spot where the wind can really dry out the blue bonnets. So it was like a week after we shot, you shot these that these had already gone, right? They were gone. I tried to bring friends there probably about four days later, mm -hmm. and it looked nothing like that. They were completely dried up, did not look as good at all. Yeah. Okay. And this field had a really nice mix of flowers. So this is on the other side of the driveway, but yet it's on the main road. So yeah. So we weren't on anyone's land when we were, yeah. except we were on the, you know, the highway easement. A nice live oak tree. I'm not sure what the white flowers are. I've been trying to look that up. I'm not sure. Yeah. Another good shots. There we go. And there's the red drum and flocks. Uh, this is a field that is on Highway 95, just south of Flatonia, and. Kathy actually took a zoom to this photo, but when you're shooting it without a zoom from the road, you, they every time I've gone to this uh, field, they always have Indian paintbrushes and the blue bonnets, and then they have a nice cluster of live oak trees in the background. So it makes for a very nice shot. It's very pleasant, and it's on the corner of Weinheimer Road, something like that, in uh, Highway 95 south of Flatonia is where that one is. So we're a little bit further out um, from the area that I showed you in green on the map. This is Oak Hill Cemetery? Cemetery? Yes. Okay, I always thought it was Oak Wood, but all right. Um, yeah. This cemetery, if you are on the I-10 corridor, this is in Flatonia. As soon as you come off the highway at um, the intersection of Highway 95 and I-10, it is on the south side uh, frontage road, and you'll go down 95. You'll see it immediately on the right. The caretaker of this cemetery must love blue bonnets because practically every grave has blue bonnets on it. They, it's not a super old cemetery, so you won't get headstones from the 1800s. I would say it's probably, you know, from the early 1900s. So you get those real Art Deco, um, Art Nouveau uh, grave uh, headstones and stuff. But it's a great place to get those photographs of blue bonnets. And the blue bonnets are really thick, thick as thieves when they are on the grave sites and stuff. So it's a great place for those kinds of photos. And there's some more. This is what I mean by kind of the older, early 1900s headstones. But you can see how thick the blue bonnets are on that one. And there's that field, Kathy. My favorite spot, and I made you keep going to. I know. We had to take sunrise, sunset photos at this field. But this field, let me click back over to the map to show you where it is. This is actually on Highway 97 between Floresville and Stockdale, and this field is right about right there. I'll zoom in a little bit. And there's not very many blue bonnets, or there wasn't very many blue bonnets. It's right in this area, I think, um, on this field. But, oh, my gosh, the... Uh, the yellow was intense. It was, the, yeah. It was just beautiful. And these are, these. I think I finally figured out these yellow flowers were groundsel. 
or groundsel, however you pronounce it. The white flowers here are white prickly poppies, and then that's drum and phlox, the um, hot pink. And there were blue bonnets um, in there, the sandy blue bonnets, but they're so much shorter than everything that's taller. But the most spectacular thing about this field is that lone oak tree in the background. And it just has a beautiful canopy, it's branches and stuff. You can sit there and play with your camera getting different angles and you get the most gorgeous shots there. And then as you can see, we're facing west and we're getting the sun the sunset, right? Yes. Yeah, this is sunset. Now that you didn't play with the sky, did you? No, and that's after sunset. Wow. As soon as the sun went down, that's when you tend to get all the different colors. Wow. And that's a great shot. Was, I have to say that night we got lucky. The, the yeah. sky just kept changing. It was that beautiful. was gorgeous. Gorgeous shot. And then this is one I picked with the iPhone because I was trying to geo map the area. That's a great shot. I didn't know you had that shot. You know, sometimes the iPhone picture comes out better than the actual yeah. Well, we took. Well, we tried to take selfies. We weren't very successful at it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're both shooting all different stuff. And you know what? We never have the time when we get back to the hotel and show one another what we've gotten. You know, it's it's so busy when we're doing this. Oh, I love this shot. This was a huge field that I think is off of FM five oh five thirty nine, which runs right past the field we were just talking about with the lone oak tree. This was a huge field, and the only way I could tape it was to go through Kathy's sunroof. <laughs> and I'm holding up my iPad, taking a video of it, too. That's a great shot. I love it. Your car looks so clean. <laughs> you probably won't look that way this year. Oh. <laughs> older. <laughs> it looks great. And there's some Indian paint brushes that were near that big field as well. Uh, great looking. Oh, it was Indian paint brushes year last year. Man, everywhere south of I-10 was just thick with Indian paint brushes. I've never seen them that much. Oh my gosh, here's the OMG field. This is well over, oh my gosh, it must have been like 60 to 80 acres of nothing but sandy blue bonnets. See, once again, you notice there's no white tops throughout these blue bonnets. This is located on FM 1681, which is um, on, off of Highway 123. It's to the east, so it's between Seguin and Stockdale once again. So how'd you get this shot, Kathy? I think this shot, I'm trying to remember if this was the top of the hill. This one was with a zoom lens. Okay. And you know, so are we looking at it from the driveway that we had the car parked, or are we on the road? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember. With actually, no, no, no. This one we're on the main road, and I took the zoom lens with this one to try to get up closer to the tree. Okay. But I want to say my other shot was a pano. And I didn't use the zoom lens. So I think this one, this is from the main road. Okay, so the car would have been to the, our left in this photograph. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it, it's hard for me. Because I can't take a zoom like that with my iPhone. So here's a further, is this the pano you were talking about? Yes. Oh, okay. And you can, and you can really see how far these blue bonnets, because if you look on the right-hand side, it's like a wave. It, the blue just kept going. Yeah, it kept going and going and going. That was a great field. We spent a lot of time at that field. And, you know, we didn't drive down FM 1681 much further than this field, so we don't know if there were any others, but, the, but what we did drive down, we saw nothing else. And we saw nothing else before this field, too, right? I mean, we didn't see anything before this field, and we didn't see really anything after we, this field. We drove for a while, too, before we... I think we went we, down... I okay. seem to remember going down some country roads for a while before we hit this spot, and there wasn't much there. Oh, okay. And there's just another angle. Oh, that day the clouds were perfect, too. So we were... We would wait for the sunlight to 
run across the field and that's and you could tell in the first picture I was kind of taking different shots the way the way the shade was hitting the flowers. If you go back to the first one. Yeah. See how you've got the shade in the front and then the sun in the back. Yeah. It looked different the way if you if you waited for the sun to kind of roll over the hill. Oh my gosh, it was great. The clouds were perfect that day. It was so cool. All right, so you'll have to speak of the next photographs because unfortunately I wasn't with you on that one. Okay, so this right here is when I, probably about four days later, I was actually taking my friends to go see that blue bonnet field. That was unbelievable, but we kind of stopped around. Um, we stopped in a lot of the same places that you and I did, but uh -huh. this road, and if you scroll down, I think I wrote down which road it was. I just went up, we went up a random road and came across these flowers, and there was a field with horses. Oh, yeah, we got the horses. So this is all the same, this, is the, this will be the same road the next couple shots right here. Okay, and just to let you guys know that these purple flowers are still drum and flocks. So that shows you we've now seen three different shades, three different colors of drum and flocks flowers. So that, just to show you how pretty it was. Yeah, it's still coming red, pink, purple. There's purple. Those are drum and flocks right there. And some blue, uh, some Indian paint brushes standing in their ground amongst all the other ones. This is the same road. I didn't notice this. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was dropping from his mouth? Yes. Oh my gosh, it looks like you yes. photoshopped it on. He was eating the flowers and I just happened to catch him with the flower falling out of his mouth. Oh my gosh, that's too crazy. Now, was he actually eating the Indian paintbrush all the way through? You know, I'm not sure if he ate it all the way through. Oh, okay. Because right. I... Might be why he spit it out. Yeah, it might be. Well, that's a great shot. So just to let you, so do you know what road this is on? Oh, wasn't it on 87 or something? Was um, what? It's off of 87. Scroll down a little bit further and it will tell you. County okay. Road 417 off, right of, 87. off of 87. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this, do you remember if it's north or south of Stockdale? I believe it was south. I'm not, I think it oh, was so, must, so that would be east with 87. Okay. All right. Cool. Great shot of the horse. I like him. I like this shot right here. I love this one. Now I can't tell if, yeah, those are drum and flocks in the front. I was wondering if they were prairie verbena, but they're not. And once again, the sandy blue bonnet because you cannot see any white tips. Oh, what a gorgeous shot. And these yellow flowers, these are uh, Plains Coreopsis. Now this is another spot that, that you and I did not find but we will have to go check it out this season. It's right oh, behind the church. Yeah, it's uh, it's in Stockdale. It's the Church of Christ, and Kathy says it's off of 120 Highway 123. You can see the church, and she said this field was back behind it. It's a huge field, and there's a parking lot behind the church. You can park there and just kind of walk back there, and uh, the color was unbelievable. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't seen these photographs before. Oh. Same, same field behind the church. And look at and all actually, the paintbrushes. Okay, you see where the paintbrush is, where the cursor is? You could actually, there was, a li there was like a little path between fences, so you could walk in between there. Oh. Man, I, I'm telling you guys, like I said before, last season was the Indian paintbrushes season. Uh, they were out in full force. I've never seen that much Indian paintbrush. That was the first for me, too. I'd never seen the Indian paintbrush. They have massive fields of them. Like, there's a church in New Berlin, and it was nothing but Indian paintbrushes all over the place. We don't have any photographs of it this time. And once again, Plains Coreopsis are these yellow and flowers. And that's the path I was ta talking about. Like, are you talking about this right here or where in the, the picture? When I said that the Indian paintbrush was off in the distance. Oh, in the here. 
Oh my god. That was it. And so all the yellow was on the left of the path. Wow. And look at the purple flowers. If those those are either drum and flocks or prairie verbenas. So oh my god. Every time you walk up a different path, you could just see the oh. color change. Oh my gosh, look at all the paintbrushes in the background. Yeah, it was amazing. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm impressed. That's a <laughs> field of a wildflower fiesta. Absolutely. Okay, so this is behind the Church of Christ in Stockdale. 633 State Highway 123 North in Stockdale. Wow, that's a, that's a great field. So hopefully they'll be blooming this year. Yeah, and the, these white flowers are um, white prickly poppies, and I believe the yellow flowers are a type of daisy. It is not bastard cabbage, I can assure you of that. There's a close-up of the prickly poppies. They're so pretty. I love the prickly poppies. They're pretty. They hurt. They got there's a reason why they're called prickly. <laughs> so oh, there's a great shot of drum and flocks. Just gorgeous. These are just the sweetest flowers. I love those. And the color is amazing. Yeah. So you did not edit this photo, right? Those are not edited. Those that is not crazy. edited, guys. That's what you will see. And keep in mind that there are no cameras. No camera can capture what your eye will see. So there's always, you know, a degrading of the colors and the light when a camera captures it. Yes, I know that today's cameras have really good light sensors in them, but they still don't have as well as what your eye will see. And so if it looks this nice in a photograph, imagine what it is in person. Okay, and that looks like that's the end of the slideshow. All right. So just to kind of go back over the map, just to brief you guys, like I said, the area you've seen most of the photographs were in this area here between Floresville, Stockdale, and Seguin. And then you did see some photographs from the Cuero Yocum area and then on up this road here to Flatonia. So that's where we showed our photographs of. And then um, Kathy and I will be doing our road trip the weekend of um, March 28th through 29th. And I'm going to try to get back on screen. So there we go. Um, so we're definitely going to check these fields out, see how things are going, and um, report back to you guys. So and we're hoping to hit some new areas too, ones that we didn't travel last year. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, one of these days I got to get over to Poteet and Pleasanton. Now, that year we went to Poteet, what, 2013? That one land had those huge fields. Remember that? Yeah. That we got onto. Yeah. So um, those of you that are in that area, if you or you make that area. Um, was just north of Poti, or was he? It was off of Highway 16, and you will see on the east side these huge fields. Because I think he told us he had 80 acres in each pasture, and they were just full of sandy blue bonnets. So we took pictures there, and so that's a great place. Like I said, I've gotten reports of Pleasanton and Poti blowing up. Um, West San Antonio is beginning. Uh, Hill country, deep in the hill country, I think it's still um, it's still some time. It, odds are when Kathy and I road trip, we get there a little early because I kind of have to book my travel arrangements um, ahead of time. And plus, we kind of have to get there a little bit ahead of the bloom or ahead of peak to let you guys know so that you've got enough time to get down there during peak and after peak. So. Um, if you hear of us going back, you know that it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Kathy and I, I'll be going back. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Kathy lives in San Antonio, so it's a little bit easier for her to go back during the week. But um, I'll be coming down for two solid weeks of road tripping. So Kathy and I will be together um, that first weekend. Then I'll be headed to Austin, Georgetown, Round Rock area. I might go dip my toes in the hill country, see how it is, and then the week after Easter, Kathy and I are hooking back up for another Blue Bonnet frolic, and we are going to spend time in the Texas hill country. 
it has been way, way, way too long since the Hill Country has had blue bonnets. Now, in 2012, uh, Lano had really nice blue bonnets. That's Ooh, when yeah. Kathy and I met, and uh, I was I was tweeting to Kathy, "Hey, you need to go find where this location is <laughs> and stuff." So we are we've got a list about this long of places that we want to find and places we want to go check out. So hopefully. You know, it sounds like the Hill Country got plenty of rain, especially the southeast portion of Gillespie County. They got plenty of rain at the right time. A lot of people think that the rain needs to happen in the spring, and that's not true. It has to happen in October, November, so that the blue bonnets germinate and they sprout so they can set the rosettes out for the winter. So that uh, southeast Gillespie County, that means Willow City Loop, for those of you that are familiar, it means Marble Falls, Johnson City, Bernie. They got enough rain, so it should look nice in that area. So have you dipped your toes out in the hill country yet, Kathy? Not yet. Okay. I'm All right. Now, yeah. I have to say, I'm on the north side of town here in San Antonio, and I knew we were talking a week ago, and I just said I was starting to see blue. I'll have to say, within a week, it's getting a lot thicker, and they're really coming up now. Okay, but what else are you seeing that you texted me this this morning. Doctor cabbage is everywhere. Oh, so, yeah. I don't know how it is the rest of San Antonio, but the north side of town, oh. it is thick and it's popping up and hopefully it's not a sign that it's going to be choking out all the blue bonds, but there's oh. definitely a lot of bastard cabbage out there. Uh, well, we'll um, maybe the next time we do a Google Hangout, I'll try to include some photographs and videos of bastard cabbage. We, you know what we see on social media, especially on Twitter, we'll see people um, tweeting out photographs going, oh, look at these beautiful yellow flowers. And although they are pretty, I mean, I have to admit, i got to give them that, they're deadly to Texas yeah. wildflowers. They, um, not that they poison them or anything like that, it's just that they grow aggressively, they grow bigger than the wildflowers, and they keep the sun and the nutrients away from the native wildflowers. And they... The native flowers cannot thrive, therefore they can't produce seeds, therefore generation after generation they lose and then before you know it, it's a monoculture of nothing but bastard cabbage. So if we don't take care of bastard cabbage, what was once a sea of blue is going to be a sea of yellow. And it has happened in areas of Texas and we definitely need to come together and do something about it. It's why um, I started the nonprofit Forever Blue Bonnets. Uh, we're a fledgling nonprofit right now, but it's definitely one of the initiatives is to try to eradicate bastard cabbage in Texas as much as possible. So it's going to take everybody in the state of Texas to try to do something about this. There is no they in this equation. It's going to take all of us to do it and help save our native. Texas wildflowers, not just the blue bonnet, but all the other ones, but definitely our state flower. So, you have anything to say, Kathy? Or I'm, ready to wrap really, up? I'm looking forward to the season. We're going to be hitting the road soon, and we'll be out there like 70 hours a day driving and trying to find all these fields. <laughs> but it's going to be great. Yeah, and we're going to report on a daily basis. We hope. Yes, Keep in mind, we cannot always get a good enough signal, and sometimes our technology just crashes around us. So we'll try our best to, we'll be on social media. Um, this is the first year that Blue Bonnet Love will be on Instagram, thanks to Kathy. Um, she's a big Instagrammer, so she inspired us to get started, and so we'll be hashtagging. Yeah, yeah, if anybody's following us, our hashtag, we're going to try to hashtag everything the same, and yeah. decided it's going to be... So when you take your Blue Bonnet road trip, we are hashtagging Blue Bonnet Frolic. Yeah. So um, definitely you want to search those and see what's going on. We'll be sharing behind the scenes stupidity <laughs> that we seem to have. You would think two, two old broads who can use <laughs> laptops, technology, cameras, big fancy cameras. You think we could take a selfie in the Blue Bonnets? No. No. <laughs> We're going to try, but... <laughs> Last year it was a bust. <laughs> we could not... For the, first of all, we couldn't figure out how to reach out far enough in front of ourselves. 
to still be able to click the picture. <laughs> we're, we're prepared. I do have the poll. I have the poll, whatever it's called. My stick is somewhere right here. <laughs> so we have our stick. <laughs> we're going to try. Probably, probably the best thing we're going to use this for is to beat dogs off of us or something. <laughs> Or 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 oh my crazy. God, Kathy! Kathy has been <laughs> attacked by a llama <laughs> in the hill country when she was taking blue bonnets. It was your first year taking blue bonnets too. You must have thought, my God, what is going on in Texas? Willow City, City Loop. I was chased oh, by a llama. You and know the funny thing is, all the cars parked. Everybody was in their car laughing <laughs> while I'm running backwards, shooting pics of this llama chasing me. Kathy thought it was Kathy thought it was a wildlife safari on <laughs> Willow City Loop. <laughs> I did get great shots though. <laughs> you did. I remember. I saw on Facebook. <laughs> so God only knows what we will find. <laughs> so. You have to follow us on Instagram and Twitter to see. Yeah, what yeah. Happens. Definitely. All the craziness. Yeah, because because we're not putting this stuff on Facebook. <laughs> There's too many followers on Facebook to make fun of us. All the shenanigans is going to go on in Instagram. And I'm not even sure I'm going to link the Instagram to the Twitter account. Because <laughs> somehow photographs just get a little more lost in Instagram. <laughs> yes. yes, they do. And it's also it's not quite as easy to share stuff out at the click of a button. So it's like, we'll be showing that kind of stuff. But, uh... We'll try to do these Google Hangouts. We know it was long, but you know what? Just go get a cup of coffee and hang out with us. <laughs> or a margarita or a mojito, we whatever, whatever your that. choice of pot poison is. We'll try to stay sober. Well, maybe not. <laughs> as bad as the technology was last night, we might start drinking real soon. <laughs> hey, might work even better. <laughs> so anyhow... Uh, yeah, we went a little over an hour or so. Maybe we're right at an hour, but whatever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll try to do these at least once a week during the Blue Bonnet season. And then, as I said, when we're on our Blue Bonnet frolic, we will try our best to do one each night to give you a summary of what we found on the road. We're still trying to figure out how to get our photos up quickly. <laughs> That's the problem, just trying to get it up in a timely manner. And God help the bandwidth at the La Quintas we stay at because we're going to be sucking it dry. <laughs> we'll be uploading YouTube videos. And we'll be doing a live Google Hangout. <laughs> the poor people won't be able to see use the internet. <laughs> but it's all free. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we're going to sign off for the evening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you hung with us this long, more power to you. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys in a little while. Good night. Good night.